Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's talk about games. So in the last one of these shader videos, I talked about color modification in a shader by messing with the saturation and value components of a hue, saturation, and value color, and converting to and from hue, saturation, and value, and red, green, and blue. And in today's video, we are going to do what you might consider the, uh, the third aspect of that, and that is messing with the hue and performing a hue shift. And I mentioned in the last video that there are actually a couple ways to do this and they produce slightly different results. I am going to be talking about not one, not two, but three strategies for doing a hue shift in this video. There may be more ways to do it than this even, but these three are the ones that I'm going to be talking about right now. Uh, these, as you can see, produce slightly different results. I am personally a fan of the one in the, uh, in the bottom right, the one that I've labeled YIQ conversion, because I think it preserves contrast better than the other two. But to each their own, you can pick your favorite one of these for your game and, and, um, and use whichever one you think works best. So let's jump right in. The, uh, the actual demo project that I have is not quite as fancy as what I just had up on the screen. Uh, what I have right now looks a lot like the demo project for the last video. I have the default sprite, which is going to be no color modification. This is going to be basically our control group so that we can compare it to the, um, uh, to the ones that we're messing with. Uh, we have uh, three other sprites, three other copies of the sprite, and we are drawing these each with different shaders, each different um, hue shifting shaders. One I have labeled HSV conversion. You can probably imagine how that's going to work. The second I have labeled RGB rotation. The third one I have labeled YIQ conversion. And we will be uh, we will be getting to each of these in due time. Right now they're all empty. Uh, the um, they sort of have the same skeleton. So in the fragment shader we have uh, again much like the last video, we have a hue shift function which be which is being performed on the final output color. And right now it doesn't really do anything, it just returns the, um, the, the color that you started with. Um, same for uh, YIQ conversion and RGB rotation. Also, I should go on record saying I don't know if, if um, any, of these, any of these strategies for hue shift that I'm going to talk about today have official names. I just called them this because it's, I, I couldn't find like, official names for them. And this is just semi-descriptive of how they work. So let's get started. We're going to start with the hue shift. This is probably the most straightforward. This is probably the way of doing a hue shift that most people think about. And that is going to be by converting the RGB color to HSV, messing with the hue, and then converting it back, much like we did in the last video. So much like we did in the last video, I am going to say HSV.X plus equals the shift amount, the shift amount being a uniform that we're passing to the shader. You may want to constrain this value, uh, the final HSV.X, uh, the, the x component, the first component of this vector being the hue, you may want to constrain this between a range of 0 and 1 because that is the, um, because that is the range of each of the components for the HSV calculation. But if you wanted to do that, you could say hsv.x equals mod hsv.x and 1.0. Uh, the mod function is modular division. It is analogous to the percent operator in a bunch of other programming languages such as modern day GML. I'm not sure why the uh, the OpenGL shader language does not support the percent sign as the modulo operator and why it instead requires you to use the mod function, but here we are. This function is going to divide hsv.x by 1.0, return the remainder, and then whatever the remainder is. That's, uh, that's modulo division. You could also, since we're just dividing by 1, you could also just use the fract function and that is going to return the fractional part of hsv.x. That might be a little bit cleaner. It's up to you. So I can run the game now, and we are going to see that we do indeed have a hue shift. Uh, it's going slightly fast. I'll get back to that at the end of the video, but we can see that it works. We are cycling between, we are cycling between the default sprite, which is red, to like green and blue and yellow and back to red. We have ourselves a hue shift. It's pretty simple. Okay. Next, uh, let's implement the next one. So if I were to open up the RGB rotation shader, we can see that the uh, the vertex shader is once again basically just a default pass-through shader. Nothing special to see there. In the fragment shader part, we have um, we have basically an empty hue shift function that just returns the input color. It doesn't do any modification to it. And this is going to work using something called the Rodriguez rotation formula. So this is a little formula which can be used to rotate a vector in space around an arbitrary axis. If you're interested in this sort of thing, uh, you can read about it on Wikipedia. It's very like, it's very like math jargon heavy as technical pages on Wikipedia tend to be, but ultimately it's a handy bit of math for rotating a vector in space. 
and the applications of it goes well beyond uh, doing things with colors. And as a bit of a fun aside, if you go and look up the guy who developed this, Olinda Rodriguez, and he is a Frenchman, so I have no idea if what I just said is anything close to the actual pronunciation of his name. This guy was alive in the first half of the 19th century, back in the days when, like, my ancestors were still just farming potatoes in rural Ireland or something like that. And this is yet another fun example of things that you can do in mathematics that wouldn't have even been dreamed of by the, uh, by the people who first developed them hundreds of years ago. Anyway, back to Game Maker. Uh, implementing Rodriguez rotation formula is actually going to be pretty simple. I'm going to start off with a vector 3, and I'm going to call this k, as I, uh, as I called certain other constant vectors in, in, last, in the last video. And this is g going to just be, instead of, um, instead of anything crazy, uh, this is just going to be a vector 3, which contains 0 0.57735 uh, in all of its components. You could write this out the long way. You could, um, as I was doing in the last video, you could... Uh, repeat this three times, this number three times for the three components of this vector, but you really, you really don't have to. If you just pass a single value to a vector constructor, then the shader compiler will know to, uh, to put the same value on all components of that vector. Next, on the next line, I am going to define a float. I'm going to call this uh, just cos angle, and that's exactly what this is going to be. I'm going to just um, say the cosine of the the hue shift amount that we are passing in as a parameter. The desired range of this value, unlike in the HSV version, is going to be between 0 and 2 pi, so it's going to be in radians, a value in radians between 0 and tau, uh, 0 and 2 pi. I will get back to that in a minute. And we're going to return uh, a vector 3, and this vector 3 is going to be essentially the, uh, the product of the Rodriguez rotation formula. Um, if you want to try and convert this into shader language yourself, you can. It's not that it's not that long. It's not that difficult to do. Let me just write this out. I'm going to say vector three composed of the color times the cosine of the angle plus the cross product of k and the color multiplied by the sine of sh the shift amount. Uh, if you want to, you can also save the. Uh, the sign of the shift amount to another variable. I'm just, um, I guess you can do that. It doesn't really have any advantage. We're going to be using the cosine multiple times, and it's easier to just refer to a variable than it is to calculate the cosine multiple times. And if you want to, you can do the same thing for the sign. But anyway, uh, once you have the sign of the angle, you can add in k multiplied by the dot product of k and the input color multiplied by 1.0 minus the cosine of the angle. And let's see, that looks correct. Uh, we are only looking at about four lines of code. In case you're wondering where 0 0.57735 comes from, um, it may look slightly familiar to some of you. That's because this is just the inverse square root of 3. It's one of the magic numbers that comes up from time to time when you're dealing with vectors in 3D space, and especially when you're dealing with things like shader code. Uh, so if you've seen this magic number around before, that's that's where it comes from. It's the, uh, the inverse square root of 3. I suppose you could say if the Rodriguez rotation formula is for, uh, for rotating a vector around an arbitrary axis, uh, this is that axis that we're, that we're rotating around. Anyway, let me run the game, and we should have a hue shift. And I'm running the game, and we do indeed have a hue shift. You will notice that uh, given the same input value, at least I think they're the same input value, yeah, given the same input value, um, the HSV conversion is cycling much faster than the RGB rotation, as I've called it. And that is because um, a full a full hue shift in the HSV conversion strategy is from 0 to 1, is in the range of 0 to 1. And a, uh, a full rotation in the hue shift in the, um, the Rodriguez rotation formula is uh, 0 to 2 pi. It's in radians. So the, uh, the, the HSV version is cycling uh, 6.28 times faster than the, uh, the RGB rotation version. And if you, want to, uh, if you want to slow this down, you could divide the shift amount by 6.28 before passing it to the shader. Uh, and that way, if I were to restart the game, we would have these two, uh, these two rates of change being approximately the same. This is actually going backwards.
Well, it's the same speed in the opposite direction. I, uh, I would actually want a negative in front of that. And now we have the hue shift going in the same direction at the same speed. Okay, our final method for, uh, for hue shift is going to be a little bit more complicated. This is going to be a little bit more code. And I'm going to call this, um, I'm going to call this YIQ conversion. And what this is based on is going to be something called YIQ color space. So red, green, and blue is one color space. Uh, hue, saturation, and value is another color space. YIQ is a third. There's actually a bunch of different types of color spaces uh, that have been used at various points in various fields for various reasons. And um, red, green, blue, hue, saturation, value, YIQ are but, but a, sp a small sample of, um, of what's out there. Uh, YIQ happens to be used a lot for analog broadcast television. It takes advantage of some of the ways that our eyes perceive light to reduce the amount of bandwidth that you need to transmit a, a range of colors. The important part is that it does contain what you might what you might consider a color wheel, and we can take advantage of that. So you can take a color in some part or another of this uh, of this rainbow and rotate it around the origin, and that would allow you to do a hue shift. So you could take a vector in the uh, the i and q components of yiq color space, uh, which is again what you see here, and you could rotate it around the origin, and that would put the vector in another part of the um, for lack of better words, of the color wheel, and that would effectively be a hue shift. So we're going to start by opening up this uh, this shader. Again, basically a pass-through vertex shader. Fragment shader is mostly empty. The hue shift function just returns the the, uh, the source color. I am going to define a few functions of my own. Uh, this is going to take a similar format to the HSV and the two RGB functions from, from the last video. I'm going to say vec3 to YIQ, and this is going to take a VEC3 as an input color. I'm not going to label the components of this input color the way that I sort of made a big deal about doing in the HSV conversion shader because we're not actually going to be using them for most of this. Uh, first, I'm going to define a MAT3. This is going to be, uh, I'm just going to call it convert, and this is going to be a, a 3D matrix, MAT3. I'm going to break this up over multiple lines just to make it a little bit easier to read. Its components are going to be uh, 0 0.299, 0 0.596, 0 0.211. Um, on the first line, the first row of the matrix. On the second row, on the second line, we're going to have 0 0.587, uh, negative 0 0.274, and negative 0 0.523. On the third line, we're going to have 0 0.114, negative 0 0.322, and negative and positive 0 0.312. And you can space these out a little bit more nicely if you would like, um, so that the uh, so that all the numbers line up. This is a three by three matrix. We are going to simply to convert to YIQ color space, we are simply going to multiply the input color by this conversion matrix. So um, that is to say the the return value is just going to be convert conversion matrix times the input color. Next, we would like to be able to go back. Actually, let me just see, because I didn't do this when I was uh, when I was doing my planning for this video. I didn't do this when I was doing the planning for this video. What would this look like if I simply converted uh, red, green, blue to YIQ and, uh, and just sort of left it there? Uh, why is this being rejected? Am I not allowed to have a trailing comma? I guess I'm not allowed to have a trailing comma. Okay, so this is a little bit of a, a burned-in version of the frog. That's cool. I was just curious. That's not what we're going to be... Um, that's nothing That's nothing like what we're actually going to be using this for in this video. So, converting back, vec3 to RGB is going to take an input vec3 color. Uh, very much the same. Uh, converting back is going to be likewise creating a mat3, three, a 3x3 three three matrix. And we're going to... Uh, basically have, I believe this is the inverse of the matrix, so we're going to have 1.0, 1 1.0, and 1.0 on the first row. That's That should be 1.0, not 0 0.10. Uh, we are going to have 0 0.956, negative uh, 0 0.272, and negative 1.106 on the second row, and on the last row, 0 0.621, negative uh, 0, 
negative 0 0.647 and 1 point, wow, 1.703. Uh, again, you could space these out a little bit if you wanted to, like this, make it easier to read. And then we are simply going to return convert, return convert times the input color. And that will give us the color that we started with. That will not give us the color that we started with because I did not convert back. This would be converting back. That should give us the color that we started with, and indeed we do uh, have just the frog without any uh, any color modification. So we're converting this uh, this color value to yiq and then back. What does yiq stand for? I stands for in phase. Q stands for quadrature. I do not see what the y stands for. The y component represents luma information, and is the only component used by black and white television receivers. Cool. The early days of TD broadcasting were like a wild place. Anyway, when it comes to the hue shift, I am going to define another matrix. This is going to be a mat two, so this is going to be a two by two matrix. I'm going to call it rotation matrix, and this is going to be a mat two. Again, let's break this up over multiple lines just to make it a little bit easier to read. Uh, the first, the first value is going to be the cosine, cosine of the shift. Uh, the second value on the first line is going to be the negative sign of the shift. Uh, the first value on the second line is going to be the positive sign of the shift, like that. And the the, uh, the last value on the last line, the second value on the second line, is going to be the cosine of the shift. Uh, this is just a bog standard rotation matrix. If you've ever looked at rotation matrices in 2D space rather than 3D space, you've probably seen something that resembles these. You've probably seen this all over the place. It's much nicer looking than doing rotations in 3D space. Lastly, uh, we are going to take yiq. We are going to take the second and third components of this vector, so the i and q components of the, uh, the yiq vector. We are going to multiply them by the rotation matrix, so yiq.yz times the rotation matrix. This is a vector 2 multiplied by a 2D matrix. And then we are going to take the yiq vector and convert that back to rg and b. And this should produce a result. Uh, apparently, oh, once again, trailing commas um, following the uh, the last argument to a function. Uh, this should produce a result. And you can see we are indeed doing a hue shift in, um, in y using the yiq conversion method. Like I said, I feel like this preserves contrast a little bit better than the other two methods, so I generally like it better than uh, the RDB rotation and HSV conversion. Just a, a bit of a word of warning, and you may have seen this when I was uh, showing off what the demo, uh, the draw event of the demo object looks like. Um, the shift, the, uh, the hue shift produced by the YIQ conversion method will go in the opposite direction of the, uh, the other two. And you can see that I threw a negative sign in front of, in front of the um, HSV conversion and RGB rotation um, hue shift values. Whereas the um, the YIQ conversion uh, uniform was uh, was positive. If I were to reverse that, we would have um, we would have all three of the hue shifts going in the opposite direction, so going to green instead of purple uh, from red. Minor detail, just something to be aware of. And the shift value itself, like with RGB rotation, this should be a value in radians, uh, so zero to two pi, uh, just the same way that it was in the RGB rotation method. Uh, you can imagine. Just looking at this code, uh, what we are doing with the shift value is doing some trigonometry functions on it. We're performing some sines and cosines. Uh, you can imagine that should probably be between uh, 0 and um, and 2 pi, the same way that in the RGB rotation strategy, we are um, we are doing a shift between 0 and we are doing trigonometry with these values. So if your hue shift is, uh, is measured in degrees or anything, if the desired hue shift that you that you want to, uh, to use is in degrees, you will need to convert. You, we have some handy functions uh, for, for doing that in GameMaker. We have a rad to deg for converting from, uh, from degrees to radians, and we have deg to rad, which is for converting from the other way around. I think I got those backwards. Anyway, if you want to see the, uh, the effect of the hue shift on some different looking sprites, I have a, um, this is a, just a water texture. And if I were to run the game on this, 
we would be able to see the um, the hue shift being performed on on these water textures. Uh, like I said, you can see it, it's a little bit more apparent here. I feel like the contrast is preserved a little bit better in the YIQ conversion method. Uh, for example, when it was um, when it was greenish, and a little bit here when they're um, when they're like magenta, the um, the contrast was uh, the contrast in the other two was was greatly reduced, and it, it looks like in places we just have a um, a tile of a solid color rather than a hue shift being performed on the uh, on the on the image. Okay, that's it. I'm going to mark this as a commit. So this is, should I commit this in pieces? I should probably commit this in pieces, right? So this is going to be the hue shift via HSV. Hue. I'll call that vector rotation. And hue shift via YIQ. So that's it. If you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. I try to make about two game dev videos a week, one of these and one Let's Make a Tower Defense game, so if you're interested in any of that, or just a whole bunch of Let's Plays, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, you can see your name in the credits, see a preview of my future plans, all that fun stuff. Uh, there will be links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Connor, David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Halo Factory, Posho, Sindra Larson, Tusk, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.